a sense of place in the universe is one and the same as a sense of our internal self. Knowing a space, a place out in the world for us is just as integral as knowing the shape, the being of ourselves. Placing wooden blocks into holes, we need to know the shape of the hole just as much as the shape of the block. I am Colin Hoffman. I'm a sociology researcher specializing in disparate communications. Disparate communications means observing the differences between groups of people, countries, nationalities, religions, all the way down to interpersonal differences and disagreements. An aspect of communication that often goes neglected is intrapersonal communication. Have you ever disagreed with yourself? <laughs> Have we ever wanted to be somewhere different than we are now? To be something different than what our parents had wanted for us. To be someone different than what society might have in plan for us. A metaphor for this is that every person is a constellation of stars, just as unique, just as vast, just as evolving as stars out in space. We'll go over tools for self-discovery questions that we ask ourselves as we travel through our life paths to better know ourselves as well as our relation to the stars, the cosmos, the universe around us. The first step to this is self-discovery. When we imagine a star in space in a vacuum with nothing around it to relate to, nothing around it to give a direction, we don't know which way is up. When we are somewhere new, when we are trying new expressions of ourselves, trying a new sport as an athlete, picking up a new instrument as a musician, learning the ways that we think, that we learn, that we do things, this is a question of what am I? In a vacuum, in an empty room, what am I? Are we lonely? Are we independent? Are we curious? Are we satisfied? Are we ambitious? Or are we content? This question that we can do these self-check-ins is, what am I? And it's the first layer of understanding what we may be in a vacuum. We don't know which way is up yet. We don't have a relative sense of our size, of how we compare to the world around us. We need a North Star. Polaris up in the night sky, the constant North Star, we are all south of that, and we know this. As children, we start to get reference points with our families, with our friends, with our neighborhoods that we grow up with. This becomes a comparative difference that is a discrete discovery. Discrete meaning on or off, white or black, more than, less than. Am I less tall than my parents? Am I less experienced, less able than they are? Am I more into baseball than my buddy Timmy? Am I less extroverted than my classmates? This is a question we can start to ask ourselves to get a sense of what is left, what is right. Are we more large? Are we more small? Are we more blue? Are we more red? Now we start to get a better sense of direction in our own universes and within ourselves. As we gain tools to measure ourselves, to measure the world around us, we can start to measure the differences. This is a dialectic discovery. Dialectic meaning a spectrum. Rather than black and white, we are now the infinite shades of gray in between. We can measure how far away stars are. We can measure how large a star is, how hot, how old. We can measure the colors that they compare themselves to. Now we know how much. That is a question we can start asking to get individual answers for the directions we go in life. How much education until I consider myself a professional in the field? How much progress until I am accomplished? How much is rich? How much further to go? How far have I come? These dialectic discoveries can be done at any points in our lives when we are 
feeling lonely, when we are feeling lost, when we're feeling low, as well as routine and regular check-ins as well. When we start getting a sense of direction, a sense of how far to go, we can start to be able to tell about ourselves where we've come from and where we want to go to in our own life paths, as we perceive other people around us as well, traveling in directions. A star traveling through space going north. Is that because something in the south exploded and expelled it that direction? Or is it because something in the north is pulling it that direction? Can it be both? Am I aspiring? to be the model of a man my father set for me? Or am I running away from the example he showed me not to be? These directions start to give us patterns, patterns that we can recognize within our lifetimes, within our behaviors, within our attitudes, within the ways we think. This is a deterministic discovery now, deterministic being predictable. Just as stars orbit one another, just as all these celestial bodies have patterns, we can predict where they are. Every 29 and a half days, we see a full moon in our night sky. Every 365 days, we complete one more revolution around our sun. This is a question of when. When this happened into my childhood, it stayed with me the rest of my life and became part of who I am. When it occurs in the future, I will know probably how I will react. This also can apply to those routine, regular, daily exercises we do as well. When I go to the gym, do I feel self-conscious? Do I feel accomplished? Do I feel challenged? When we get up in front of a group of people and speak to them, do we feel anxious, nervous? Do we feel excited? Do we feel expressive? when we run into people we disagree with, when we run into people that we agree with, how will we react? When will I heal? When will I be enough? These directions all start ebbing and flowing into the unique constellations of us. Many of these stars, many of these personality traits, identities, expressions, can be integral to who we are and so dear to us that that star burns bright and is tied to everything else. We've all seen somebody walking down the street a block away and you know exactly how they voted. <laughs> they want you to know that. It is so important to them that they want it to be broadcast to everyone light years away. We've been in the room with people where you don't feel a need to ask their sexuality or their pronouns because it is so dear to them and apparent that it shines through. On the other side of this spectrum, within our personal constellations, we can recognize we don't always need the same stars. We don't need the same North Star. Maybe political ideology is not in your constellation, does not define you and you could care less, or pronouns, or your identity as an athlete or musician, anything like that. The spaces in between all of these personality traits, expressions of ourselves, make our unique shape that fits into the night sky. We can then start finding out how we fit in to the stars around us. Just like the stars above, we are not fixed. Some stars will start to burn brighter. Some will die out. Some go dim. Some are just a shooting star, just a passing trend that we try out and we don't go back to, that we don't see again. The more corners of the universe, the more stars we know, the more differences, the more discoveries we have in the world around us and within ourselves, we gain a sense of our place in the universe, how far things are from us, how dear things are to us. This is beneficial to us and the people around us. This is demonstrable and proven in studies. At any period of our lives, when we are changing, when we are discovering, when we are learning about ourselves in children, 
children from more racially diverse neighborhoods and socioeconomically diverse neighborhoods are more willing to play with other children, especially children different than them. Wouldn't that be amazing to be unafraid of somebody different than us? In adolescence, teenagers from blended families, children of divorce, remarriages, having step-siblings, adoptive siblings, multiracial, multicultural, multilinguistic households, grow up into adults that have measurably higher life satisfaction and better predictions of worldly outcomes. Wouldn't it be amazing to not be afraid of what the news brings tomorrow? of what curves and turns lie ahead of us in our life path. Adults with a wider spectrum of universes around them and senses of self. Immigrants that have, first generation immigrants that have a community of their home culture inside the novel, more unfamiliar country and culture generally will choose to embrace one or the other a homogenous or a heterogeneous group. However, the adults that choose to embrace and express both cultures, again, have measurably higher life satisfaction and better self-awareness. All of these self-discoveries, the tools we ask ourselves when things are changing, when we're at low, dark places in our life, and we start asking, what am I? What am I doing? When we ask, okay, am I more or less than what I want to be? How much farther to go? How far have I come? When will I be? A sense of place truly is a sense of self. Thank you.